So the topic of revision for this video is uh, resistance to antibiotics. Basically, how the antibiotic develop uh, resistance is developed in due in microorganism. So major mechanisms for the development of uh, drug or antibiotic resistance might be due to the following reasons. First one is the competitive inhibition between essential metabolite and metabolic analog uh, that is the drug. So basically in microbial or in a microorganism, there might be a competitive inhibition that uh, happens between the essential metabolite that is there in the organism as compared to that of uh, the analog uh, of metabolic analog that is in case of the drug. So uh, in that case, uh, the organism may develop antibiotic resistance. <clears throat> development of alternate metabolic pathway that will bypass the reaction uh, normally inhibited by the drug. So in case the organism develops some alternative metabolic pathway in its uh, system, uh, the drug will not be able to recognize that metabolic pathway and hence it will not be able to inhibit that pathway and then the microorganism ka system will bypass that reaction normally inhibited by the drug and the organism will develop the antibiotic resistance in it. Production of certain enzymes uh, which are altered in such a way that they will function on behalf of the cell and they are not affected by the drug. So it is very straightforward that the organism will produce certain enzyme that will be functioning uh, on behalf of the organism and uh, those enzymes will not be affected by the drug. So uh, th that will help the organism to be re to become resistant to that drug or that particular antibiotic. Then is the synthesis of excessive enzyme over the amount that can be inactivated by the antibiotic or the drug. So basically, uh, every antibiotic or drug have the minimum amount in of uh, level of in inactivation that it can co cause in a single do dose. So those organisms sometimes start synthesizing uh, excessive amount of that product or enzyme that is specifically uh, inactivated by a particular antibiotic or a drug. So in that case, when the synthesis, uh, the enzyme becomes in excess, excess in the system of the cell, the drug will not be able to inactivate it properly. So that will help the organism to bypass the activity of the uh, the action of the antibiotic or that particular chemotherapeutic agent. Then uh, the inability of the drug to penetrate the cell due to some alteration of the cell membrane. So the microorganism can also change their uh, cell membrane structure or there might be some changes in the uh, cell membrane uh, structure or the alteration in that structure due to which the drugs will not be able to penetrate itself and hence they won't, they won't, they will be rendered ineffective and will not be able to kill the microorganism. Alteration of ribosomal protein structure. So when the protein structure is changed in the uh, cell, so uh, for the antibiotics or the chemotherapeutic agent that act by the inhibition of protein synthesis or in those cases, if the ribosomal structure is changed, then the drug will not be able to uh, interact or drug will not be able to attach with the subunits of the ribosome and it will not be able to stop the protein synthesis. So these are the few ways in which uh, the uh, microorganisms, they develop resistance to the antibiotics or the drugs. So uh, example of penicillin resistance, how penicillin resistance is caused in the microorganism, it is, uh, it is occurred due to the production of enzyme penicillinase. So the uh, organism produces the enzyme penicillinase and the action of this penicillinase is on the drug penicillin. It converts the active form of the drug penicillin into penicilloic acid that is the inactive form. So uh, through the conversion of active form of penicillin into the inactive form, the organism uh, becomes resistant to penicillin because it is producing the enzyme penicillinase. Similarly, there are certain gram-negative bacteria that uh, have uh, 
that have some additional genes which give them resistance and they these additional genes protect the bacteria from the bactericidal effect of the drugs or the antibiotic so this is how it will be conferring a resistance to the organism we have all known about the staphylococcus aureus bacteria which is multiple drug resistant the mdr uh, staphylococcus aureus so this is basically the drugs against which the cephalococcus aureus is uh, resistant to so the drugs are cephalothin oxytetracycline sulfadimidin fusidic acid chloramphenicol lincomycin uh, isoxazole penicillin and methicillin gentamicin erythromycin and beta lactamase reduction so uh staphylococcus aureus have multiple resistance against all of these uh chemotherapeutic agents so this is how it is getting uh gaining you know the resistance and uh, is the hot topic for these days the mdr staphylococcus aureus so this is it for this particular video no we have to also okay sorry so we also about the transmission of drug resistance how the drug resistance is transmitted from uh, generations or from one bacterium to another or from from one microorganism to another so the transfer of resistance by conjugation this was first reported independently by akiba and ochiadi which are uh, ochiadi which are japanese scientists in the year 1958 they uh, performed an experiment in which they isolated the antibiotic sensitive as well as the antibiotic resistant organism from the same serotype of patients with enteric infection so the patients that had enteric infections these two scientists they isolated the uh, same serotype organism uh, having antibiotic sensitivity and antibiotic resistance and these patients were being treated by the chemotherapeutic agents of sulfonamide tetracycline streptomycin and chloramphenicol so the these scientists they demonstrated that the, the resistance gene in the reservoir of e coli in intestinal tract was being transferred to shigella dysentery that was causing the infection so basically what was happening was that the e coli that was present in the intestinal tract it has it has a resistant gene and the positive agent of the infection shigella it was getting transformed through the transfer of the gene from e coli to shigella dysentery so they call the resistant factor is called the r factor that was present in plasmids that are the small extra chromosomal uh, autonomously replicating uh, dna molecules extra extra nuclear dna molecule so these plasmids were being transferred so there are two kinds of recipients of r factor one are the good kinds which uh, readily accept the r factor and one are the weak recipients which don't as readily accept the uh, r factor as compared to those good recipients so the examples of good recipients are uh, enterovector klebsiella salmonella and shigella while those of weak recipients are pasteurella proteus and cerecia talking about the microbiological assay of antibiotics why are these assays carried out they are carried out to determine the ability of the antibiotic in that that whether the antibiotic will kill or inhibit the growth of those living organisms there are two kinds of uh, assay that are done one is the chemical assay and one is the biological assay chemical assay is more accurate but it is less sensitive so uh, when the antibiotics are existing in pure chemical form their concentration is expressed in microgram of pure chemical per milligram of specimen so the concentration of for chemical assay the concentration of antibiotic is equal to microgram of pure chemical divided by milligram of the specimen in which it's used the biological for biological assay 
the biological potency is calculated the biological pot potency is basically the micrograms or units determined by the by comparing amount of killing or the bacteriostasis of that wo uh, of test organism caused by the antibiotic under the test that caused uh, stand uh, that is caused by a standard preparation under highly rigid control conditions so uh, the international unit of penicillin basically it is the amount of activity produced under defined condition by 0.5988 microgram of international standard which is the sample of pure benzyl penicillin so 1 gram 1 milligram will equal to 1667 units so this is these are basically the conversion rates um there are certain limitations or problems that are associated with assaying of antibiotics in blood serum substances or tissues or urine. Uh, the limitations associated are that the amounts that are present, they are generally in very small quantity as compared to the other substances that are obtained from these sources, uh, that is serum, tissue, urine, blood, etc. The antibiotic uh, is could be bound to the proteinaceous material that are uh, present in those specimens. And uh, the normal inhibitory substances may be present in the blood or other bodily fluids, which might affect assaying the antibiotic properly. Uh, oxacillin, nafcillin, uh, they are pre preferable for detecting heteroresistant methicillin resistant uh, Staphylococcus aureus and cefamidol, cefoxitin is for testing the cefalitin resistant organisms only. And uh, moving on to microbial susceptibility for to the chemotherapeutic agent. So how do we test the susceptibility of microorganisms uh, to the chemotherapeutic agents? There are different uh, methods that we are that we use. And uh, first one is the tube dilution uh, technique, in which uh, uh, it did, it helps to determine the susceptibility of a microorganism to the antibiotic or any other chemotherapeutic agent. This tube dilution method technique can employ the minimum inhibitory concentration method in which the uh, in which very small amount of chemotherapeutic agents are required to inhibit uh, inhibit the growth of organism is uh, found out is fine found out uh, so basically for minimum inhibitory concentration uh, basically it is that uh, in in under in vitro conditions, it is the smallest amount of chemotherapeutic agent that is required for uh, killing of the, or inhibiting the growth of a particular microorganism. That is basically the minimum inhibitory concentration. For finding the minimum inhibitory concentration, we use increasing amounts of antibiotic uh, that we want to examine and we will place them in different culture tubes. Uh, and tubes that contain the broth that is suitable for the growth of that particular organism and we are we inoculate that organism in the culture tubes and then uh, along with these culture tubes that have the uh, increasing concentration of antibiotics we maintain a control uh, culture tube which will have no antibiotic so after the incubation of these uh, culture tubes containing drugs of different concentration as well as the control tube that is we get to know uh, through observation that which one which under which concentration there is maximum inhibition or uh, the first culture tube under which the inhibition is happening by observing the absence of any kind of growth in the particular growth <clears throat> another method to check the susceptibility of microorganisms is uh, display technique <laughs> for this, uh, small paper discs are uh, uh, impregnated with the chemotherapeutic agent, and these discs, small discs, are plated on placed on the agar plate in different uh, agar plate surface, and this basically plates are inoculated and then incubated. <clears throat> Then uh, zones of inhibition are observed uh, around the discs that contain the chemotherapeutic agent of different concentration. Zone of, uh, 
inhibition are basically clear areas that surround the disc and they indicate that these uh, organisms were inhibited by the drug that was diffused into the agar from the disc a single disc method is for uh, uh, is single disc method is uh, recommended by the fda and which is highly standardized method uh, it is specified or specified for amount of antimicrobial agent in this test medium size of inoculum conditions of incubation so these all four conditions are highly standardized the size of zone of inhibition they will correlate with the minimum inhibitory concentration of the drug for microorganisms that are in question and uh, we can determine whether the microorganism is resistant or is susceptible to the antimicrobial agent using this single disc method that is recommended by the fda so this is it for the this video i hope it helps thank you